thought of live coding. Me too. <laughs> um, hey, I'm Lachlan. Um, I work at a local product house where I get paid to clone Flappy Bird every day. Um, yeah, so this uh, this talk is kind of like an adaptation on this talk I've seen at Camp JS actually. Tropical. Um, it's uh, it's where this brilliant person from uh, New Zealand, I forget where, they made a roguelike game in like 10 minutes, um, and I found it to be a really cool exercise for getting people into programming. So you have a friend um, who you really want to like force them to learn programming or something, but you want to make it fun. Um, you could have like replayed this exercise uh, from code, uh, from um, code, uh, CampJS, but uh, no one really knows what roguelikes are outside of being a programmer, I feel. Um, so maybe make it a bit more approachable. Um, so this exercise, this performance, is making Flappy Bird. Um, here it is here. This is, this is Flappy Bird, right? It is a little bird, and some pipes come out from the right to the left, and you get hit, and the bird goes off to the vet. But you're given a score. You're given like a score, so that's cool. Um, so this is pretty interesting. You can play for like maybe five minutes at a time before it getting born. Um, so I'm going to try and like make it in five minutes. Um, I no way I can actually make this in five minutes. <laughs> this, is, this is going to like go on for a bit longer. Do and I will definitely. Uh, I do. I'm not going to time myself though. Um, and uh, I'm definitely going to be cheating like the whole way. But um, <laughs> it's uh, it's just good to know that like. Um, this is out there, you can probably run it um, through its mates or like people watching at home if you just want to run it through yourself. Um, I'll link the, uh, the actual code later. Um, yeah, it's a bit, might be a bit, a bit of fun. Alright, cool. So a game like Flappy Bird, it has three ingredients. Alright, so it has state, um, it has the uh, renderers, and it has the event management. Um, now, when I think of anything, games or apps are making it work, I mean, clones of Flappy Bird that are making it work. Um, I, I, I think of like what the state is first and then I move on from there. So with a video game like Flappy Bird, we have this player, where it is on the screen, so it's a Y position on some particular X position on the screen. Um, the velocity that it has, because as you can see we're applying gravity, right? Um, the positions of all these obstacles, these pipes coming out, um, so they are, they're given like X, Y positions as well. And the score, you see it in the score. So um, that's pretty easy if we think about it like that. Um, if we want to jump into the code straight away, oh, no code here at all. Um, but we can we can start thinking about uh, the state. Um, what we probably want to do is represent an obstacle to begin with, because um, while we're making this, I probably just want to like start from like uh, getting the obstacles working, and then getting the player working, and then like gluing the game all together. So let's just um, let's make the uh, representation of an obstacle. Uh, oh man, this is what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> Live coding. Um, so here we can see that we are we're making an obstacle that um, has an x, y, height, and width. Um, the important thing to note here is that the height is randomly generated, but somewhere between like a fifth of the size of the canvas of the screen to a half of the size. Um, if it's first, we're just going to have a fixed width because a uh, uh, fixed height because that's better. Um, so we want to actually start like using this function there. This is just a function. This it's not 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 the actual state at the moment. It's just like a representation of what the state could be. Um, so we want to start this off. We uh, we'll make a state object, and this will be like um, the entire game state in an object. If you're making an app, like and you want it to be functional, like this will change over time. You probably don't want to be mutating it. You want to be returning new state. Let's not do that. Let's just mutate the state. Um, <laughs> we will uh, start off with uh, this. Whoops. Uh, we're going to start off with a function called init state. Um, don't know what that was. Uh, and it's going to bootstrap the state. So first, we want to create um, a game init state. Oh, there we go. That? That's brilliant. Um, now, what I intend to do here, that screen that we saw before, when you start, um, this example doesn't really have obstacles on the screen to start with, but I want it. I want to have four obstacles on the screen. So I'm going to loop over something four times, and I'm going to create obstacles. Um, I'm going to start at six pixels over from the X, and then um, 
given some spacing, we're just going to lay them out for a time, right? That's awesome. We've like figured out the initial state of the obstacles, but we have to render it. The render is really important. Um, this game, it uses like canvas, uses images, like uses sprites, all this lovely animation stuff. Don't have time for that. Can to use ASCII? <laughs> um, so what that actually looks like is we are um, rendering in HTML, right? Um, so I'm going to create a really complex. Oh, there we go. Nice. Um, there's the game. Now, the important things to note here, uh, forget about this container, forget about this. This is just, this is what we care about. The pre-tag. Pre-tag just renders some um, pre-formatted text, and for us it's going to just look like ASCII. Um, I'll get into what it will actually look like. Uh, and we're going to dump off the uh, really complex CSS. Oh, there we go. Um, so we, we are making sure to use a monospace on the pre-tag, and I'm using my favorite little font, which I uh, definitely paid for, um, called Operator Mono. Um, and that's, that's uh, the representation of the view. We have to actually dump something into this pre-tag, though, with the ID of game. So we're going to go ahead and do that now, um, where we <coughs> we're going to want to think about starting the game off, right? Um, so we need to actually call some function that goes ahead and like gets this state, initializes this state, renders it. Um, so we want to create this start function. Lovely. You'll notice there's this function that's called, but we haven't actually made it. So we're going to go ahead and make that. It's going to take a while, so just um, hold on. <laughs> All right, done. All right, so if people have made video games before, they're probably familiar with this. What it does is it's a loop. It's the game loop. Um, you request an animation frame at the end of the loop, and it goes on to call this loop again. Right? Um, but in between, we are going to be um, updating the state, rendering it, and you know, continuing. Um, what I want to do is render. Uh, we haven't got any render function yet, so we're going to go ahead and make that. Um, it's not going to do anything uh, interesting at the moment, but we essentially want to select that um, query selector yet. Yeah. We want to select that uh, pre tag with the game ID, and then we want to replace the uh, text, text not up. Oh wow, what is this? Power mode, that's so cool. Um, <laughs> and we want to render some screen, or render some canvas or something. So we have this uh, constant screen, constant of screen, um, and it's going to somehow get a string. Somehow get a string to like put back in there, right? Um, how are we going to do that? First, we want to do it with the uh, with the obstacles, right? So I need to think, how can I abstract this to make the most beautiful code ever? Um, I'm going to make a collection of renderers. So I'm not going to put all of my code into this function because I just want to like break it apart one bit at a time. It's easier for this talk, slash you know, performance, easier for the person <laughs> listening at um, home. So uh, renderers, let's make renderers a thing. And we could start um, manipulating the, the render, the canvas of this as like this huge string. That would be pretty hard. Uh, what you probably want to do is make a two-dimensional array. Um, so that would look like an actual screen where you can reference an X position um, for everyone. Like the X position starts up here, and the Y position starts up here. X, Y, OK? Um, so if we represent it as an array, um, it will be easier just to manipulate it as we go along. We can inject uh, obstacles into this array um, and also players. Um, so let's go ahead and make that. Renderers. Oh, this edit is cool. It's like written all in code for me. Um, <laughs> cool. We're, we're initializing the array. It's real, real quick. That uh, we want to also render the um, game with obstacles. Nice. Um, so what we're looking at here is in the init state, we're um, initializing an array of obstacles. Here we're looping over it. Okay. We want to loop over it so that we get the x y position of all the obstacles. And then we also loop over the amount of times that obstacle has width and height, and then paint each and every single position in the grid uh, with a cell type of obstacle. Where is the cell type of obstacle coming from? Here. <laughs> really, there's some stuff that you don't need to worry about yet, but the cell type here, it's a hashtag. Um, this game's uh, obstacles are going to be hashtags. Um, for anyone like uh, on Twitter, just hashtag, 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 ASCII bird. Um, please. Okay, cool. So uh, we are rendering with obstacles. At the moment, this is still a grid. How are we going to get back into this screen? 
um, variable and like how's it going to be a string when it's going to be given back into this inner text <laughs> of the game node. Um, you probably want to convert it from this grid to a string. Um, so because of like how I've arranged the arrays, this isn't really too easy to do that. So what I want to do is um, convert it, uh, the grid back into a string. Um, a grid through string, cool. So this is, there's not much code going here, but uh, to wrap your head around it before understanding what it does is, is uh, yeah, it's a little bit hard on the brain. Uh, I literally had to sit down and think about it for a while. Um, but what we're doing is swapping the axes. So we had x and y, but what we really want is y, x. We're, so we can join the arrays together line by line. Yeah. Um, won't be too obvious until maybe you're playing around with this exercise, but we grid to string. So at the moment, we can call um, all these functions that we've made, the uh, init grid with obstacles, grid to string. Um, what I'm going to do to make this a little bit nicer on our eyes is uh, render errors, uh, init grid. Uh, I'm going to use this function called flow. If anyone's familiar with flow or compose, um, compose is like uh, getting separate, uh, different functions and then calling them one at a time, feeding the input into each. Um, Brilliant. Let's do this. Render reverse uh, with obstacles. Brilliant. Renders, uh, grid to string. Nice. We'll pull that straight away. We don't actually have this um, function in JavaScript standard library or anything. We should. We should have compose at least, uh, but it's not there at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and make this. I'm going to make a, a one line flow <coughs> utility. Nice. It's almost as if I'm like importing Lodash. So handy. <laughs> While we're at it, let's just format that. It's pretty uh, new line. It's good. Pretty code. Um, going back to the render, uh, we actually have this now, and we don't really have to pass anything in because the grid will create an array and it will return that. Um, flow then passes it onto the next function with obstacles. So this is where with obstacles is getting its grid from. Yep. Um, and it's returning a grid as well. Uh, so it happens to be the same grid, but it could be a new array. Doesn't really matter. Um, and then grid to string is returning that grid into a string. So this screen here turns out turns out being a, uh, a string. All right, we're at a stage where we can like see this screen being rendered. Um, fingers crossed. <laughs> Didn't work. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Whoever just said, "Woo, hate you." All right. So this is uh, this uh, this is other other function I forgot to create. Let's write it out manually. Oh, very quickly. <laughs> Times. Yes, and it's broken again. Height, height. H, height. Oh, it's broken again. Wait, does it just not understand that syntax? No, that's fine, I think. Random is not defined. Did I not make random? Oh, I didn't make random either. I'm gonna write this out. This one's quite cool. This is these are just like functions you can actually pull from Lodash. Random just uh you can create a random number between x and y, or low and high. Um, and we'll go ahead and do that. So yes, we created something. I don't know what that stuff is though. <laughs> Great. Um, so at the moment we are just rendering some screen thing um, and it's coming back. So I found the cause of the problem. Um, this editor when it tries to, oh here we go, it's actually rendering. Yes! Alright, these, these are the pipes. Uh, interestingly, the snippets manager inside of Atom um, doesn't allow you to put a new line anywhere. So if I'm making code that has a new line character in it, please just like replace the thing. Um, so it actually works, or else we get things like appearing on screen. So, this is like this is the game at the moment. It doesn't have any walls around it. it doesn't have any player. But we've we've managed to uh, randomly generate these pipes with varying different heights. So uh, at this stage, like it's pretty good, pretty good. Um, but from here, we want to start doing some different things. We want to progress the obstacles. Um, so we want to inject an external event, the progression of time. <laughs> It's an actual, yes, yeah, an external event. Um, so we want to think about uh, event management. Um, so we want to start calling this up state, update state, right? 
it needs to do something. And what it's going to do is um, uh, nudge, nudge these little obstacles one at a time. Oh, oh, oh. Um, given like some, uh, given some. Actually, I'll talk about that later. But yeah, they'll nudge them along, and then if uh, there's a certain spacing between this obstacle and the edge of the screen, it'll like pop up another obstacle um, on the bottom of the top to the middle. Um, so doing this, doo -doo -doo, we want to create a function to start updating the state. Function update the state. Uh, and this doesn't need to return anything. It just needs to mutate that global state object, right? Um, and just with the renderers, where we had functions to do one thing at a time, um, I'll do that for all the updaters. Uh, but for us, we're not going to be. Uh, but for the updaters, they don't need to be returning a grid or a string or, at all. They just um, they just need to do something. Um, game updaters, and we want to create the generate obstacle. So we're going to think about like making. Um, Actually, I'll nudge, I'll nudge them. Nudge, nudge obstacles. So with this updater, what it does is it goes through all of our state obstacles and gets the x position on each, and then like negative, uh, take take away one from that. And that will just like move it backwards. This is positive. This is backwards. This is positive, negative. So um, if you get rid of one x, it's going to push it that way. Okay. Um, so if we do that, and if we actually call that in here. Um, updaters, nudge, obstacles, um, and we reload, oh, five, latest, latest, latest. Um, we've kind of like got a game kind of going on, um, uh, but we want to actually um, like yeah, in, in, generate new obstacles. Um, so we can call this, wow, there's a lot of code going in. Um, this isn't too complex, uh, I mean it's only like, what? Uh, to do almost 20 lines of code. Um, but what it does is if there's no um, obstacles on the screen, we haven't run it in this case yet, but it'll, it'll just create a new obstacle for us. Um, but otherwise, we're going to run this path of code. Um, and this will just look out for whether we need to generate something and then uh, generate it if, if, we, if we're in a position to generate it. Um, rather than go through this because it's not too complex, I'll just reload and it's not being run. You need to call your functions, people. <laughs> All right, generate obstacle. Yes. yes. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so at this point, like, um, if you have someone who's new to programming and they see this, their mind is gonna be blown, um, and they might just stop there and like, oh, I've done enough. I'm a pro now, and I walk off. But um, persist. Like, you need to actually make this a game that you can play. Um, so we need to generating things quite fast here. So maybe we want to like um, throttle the generation of obst obstacles. So um, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, maybe we want to create some new utility for throttling. Mm, let's do that. Game. No wait. One line. Throttle. Oof. Nice. So this throttle uh, implementation is a little bit different from the one you might be familiar with. It takes a function and returns a new function. And then each time you call that, it'll get called. But if you call it again, um, uh, within the time limit that you give it, it won't invoke that function. It has to wait until like it's, it's reached the limit, and then you can call it again. So this means that if we apply it to this, it'll uh, only go through it, nudge an obstacle, generate an obstacle. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um, every, uh, every, I don't know, like, um, one frame is 16 milliseconds, it times out by seven, we could wait that long until we do all these things. Um, interestingly, I made this little change to it where um, if the limit is a function, then we call the function instead, instead of applying like a number to the um, second argument of set timeout, which should be a number being milliseconds. Um, this is important because we have to um, take in state into account, the speed progression that is. All right, going through all this. Progression of speed. Um, Throttle, throttle, throttle. Where did I? There we go. So if we just want to um, make an update state, so what I'm going to do is actually use our flow function again. Uh, yeah, flow here. I'm going to make uh, an array. Uh, sorry, I'm going to make a function one time that um, our loop can just call any time, many times as it wants. 
And this becomes handy because if I want to throttle my um, nudge obstacles and generate obstacles, I need to think about um, creating this throttled function only once. Um, uh, I might need another little utility here for, nope, that's not it. Mm, there's a lot of things going on there. Where is my state? Here it is. Game in the state. Mm. All right, lost, lost without my editor cheating for me. Um, <laughs> What do I want to do? I want to initiate something called state uh, speed progress. At the moment, that's just one. Um, cool. Speed progress is one. Oh, I'm actually going to cheat because I am. <laughs> Time seven. Yeah, there we go. Give me that. Give me that. You never saw that? All good. <laughs> Um, so, here, yeah, I'm going to create this utility. Let me, by speed progress, um, this is what I want to throttle by. So, uh, it could just look like I am going um, uh, between single frame times seven, so this is 16 milliseconds times seven. Um, I think it's actually called something else, I might have been in that. Uh, milliseconds between, yeah. Milliseconds between, cool, cool, cool. Um, times seven, but I also want to divide it by the speed progress. And this means that, like, as the game progresses, the game can like get faster and more intense and crazy. Um, we'll see that in a moment. I'm just going to stick that in there. No one really needs to see it yet, um, but we will go ahead and enable that. Mm, missing something after. Come on, second one. Thank you. Awesome. So if we wait long enough, that will like speed up to a point where it's kind of ridiculous. But um, we'll move past that. So at the moment, this is these are the obstacles. We've pretty much tackled that. The obstacles are done. Um, we might want to add in something else, like the walls. Um, so if we want to create um, this grid and stick hashtags around it so that it looks walled off, we can probably do that pretty easily by going with walls. Nice. Um, what this essentially does is just like push um, hashtags like on top below it to the side of the, uh, the grid before it gets turned into a um, string. Um, and we can touch that with walls. Nice. That looks like a nice canvas now, doesn't it? Um, so at this point, we want to inject the bird. Um, and I'm way over five minutes at the moment. Whoops. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, we want to think about the. Uh, hey? 20. Tw this is 20 minutes right now. Oh. <laughs> Dude, oh my, I don't want to like um, push out this this uh, meetup. Do people just want me to like skip along to like key points no, in the game? Do the bird. All right, do the bird. All right, so if we just also bring in the chalk. Yeah, I, I will do, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna like pull in some things so I can just create this really quick. Do do do. Yeah, let's grab that. Um, let's go on to the init state. Um, so when we're thinking about the bird, the bird is an object almost just like the obstacle. It's got an X and Y, but it has a V. The V stands for velocity. Um, it's X velocity, to be precise. Um, if it's of velocity zero, it's going like this. If it's of velocity one, it's going like this. Velocity minus one, like this. Okay? That's what the bird looks like in the actual game. That's what the bird looks like in our better game. Um, uh, and then what we want to do is, um, with bind? What is that? Oh, with, oh yeah. Uh, we want to render that. Um, so if we were to just render it right now, it's just going to be this bird that looks like this. And that's all right. Like, you could just finish off the game like that. I wouldn't recommend it, but... <laughs> with bird. Bird. Okay. Brilliant. Um, quickly to run through this code. Um, if the velocity is above or below a certain threshold, we're going to change up the, uh, the type of bird it, that it is. Um, I'll sh I won't show you what character this is until I render it though. So this should went render fine, but we're going to call that, alright, yes, it's a bird! <laughs> awesome! <laughs> Woo. Um, so we actually want to apply some gravity, um, and this is like the only thing that makes the bird go like this. It should be really easy, 
we just add one something to our updaters. Game updaters, uh, apply gravity, first one. All right, cool. Uh, now if we, um, oh, we don't actually throttle it. We don't have to do that at all. Oh, something, something went really wrong there. That's all right. <laughs> I think it's the uh, name of these cell type, but I'll go down. No, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's this. There we go. Oh, so the bird just fell off the screen. There we go. Um, from here, we can do some other things though. Like, you want to tap on the bird. You want to like tap. You want to tap and make the bird flap, right? Tap flap. Oh, I wish I didn't say that. Um, but uh, yeah, you can definitely do that. So we, we need to like add some other kind of event management for this stuff. Um, and this is where we hook into the DOM's um, uh, key bindings. Um, so we can go down here and uh, we can start running at our really long, oh, there we go, cool. Um, and start game, blah, blah, blah. game, this, and flap, blah, blah, blah. All right, cool. It's going to be calling this updaters flap function. It's not there at the moment. Um, this is uh, one of the more complex updaters that we're going to write, so I'm just going to go through it really slowly. Um, <laughs> yeah. It makes the velocity just like um, positive. That's essentially what it's doing. It's not applying any kind of dynamic velocity, though. I'm not too smart for that. It just applies a static velocity. So, if I replay this, reload. And oh, it doesn't really it doesn't want to actually listen to anything I'm doing. Oh, this makes this makes sense. I need to add another utility. So um, if we go down and look at the key code, I'm referencing these keys that don't exist. Um, so I can go ahead and make them. And this just references like enter is key 13. If you want to go and look this up yourself, this is a key code info uh, website um, where you can just like play around. And yeah, it's pretty handy. Um, so I just grab that, and if we reload now, no. yes. <laughs> oh man, it's kind of done at this point. That's good. All right. Um, at this point, I think uh, the the rest of the game is just for me coding it live is probably a bit um, redundant. I can probably just skip to the end. Skip to the end. Please show show you all the cool stuff. So let's do that. Let's just copy over our code here. Yeah, copy that. I'm going to copy this. Um, hopefully, you won't see the stuff at the bottom. I can see it. That's good. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, get rid of this. Mm, leave? Why is it telling me? Why is it telling me to leave? <laughs> That's strange. All right, reload this. Reload, reload, reload. Need to save all these. All right. This is, this is the game. Can everyone see that? I'm going to zoom in a little bit, not too much. Biganize. So what we've biganize? Biganize? It's not even a word. <laughs> uh, full screen. Uh, so this is the game. We've added the score. I could have gone over that. Whatever. Um, added some other appended text. Doesn't matter. It's just telling us how to play. So let's play. Um, brilliant. If you see the score, it's progressing. That's amazing. I'm going to show you something really cool when it hits our score 10 now. You ready? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, sweet. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> that was supposed to start playing straight away. Okay, um, any quick questions? No? Awesome. Um, I'm going to link the, uh, the code for this and like uh, maybe some instructions to follow it if you want to like run this through better with uh, real people. Um, you guys are real people. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> Thank you.